All right, in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at animating cameras using the story window and camera animation tracks. Now, before I get started, there is something I do need to put into my scene. What do you think that is, Joel? Maybe a camera. Absolutely. Right now, all we have is the producer perspective, and we're not going to be able to animate that using story. So under elements, I'm just going to grab a camera and drag it into my scene like so. Now, before I start adding camera animation tracks to move this camera about in our scene, I want to take a minute and mention this. If you have a big scene, this window is going to get cluttered quick. So there is a way we can keep this organized. What I'm going to do is right click and go to insert and insert a folder. If I right click on this folder, I can rename it to whatever I want. So let's rename this Ninja Animation. And then I'll just drag my character track up inside of this and then minimize the folder and everything's nice and organized. So just uh, something to be aware of, very handy thing. Yeah, that is very cool. Now let me go ahead and get my camera into position before I get it down inside of Story. I'll just right click on this camera and make it current. And we'll just position it exactly where I need it so it's looking at just what I need it to look at. Hey, about like so. Let's jump in here. I'll hit Control e to go back to Producer Perspective. And that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and get this camera inside of Story. I'll right click and insert a camera animation track and you'll notice the track content no longer has a browse button it only has a pull down menu which automatically has all of the cameras in your scene so we'll go ahead and select camera and now we're all set to begin animating this camera now I need to make this track available to keyframes so I'll hit the animate button and I need to place an initial keyframe so that auto key will function so I need to make sure that I have well, actually let me let me spell this out before I go on. I just I know I get going so quick because I get so excited. But here's the deal: I want two cameras inside of this scene. I want this first camera to just kind of rotate and watch our ninja as he begins to run. Then we're going to bring in a second camera that's going to actually track and follow our ninja along throughout the sequence. And then we're going to use the camera switcher later on to jump in between the two cameras. Sounds good. All right, so this is just the rotational camera. This one's just going to rotate. So all we really need to animate is the camera's interest. So I'll select the camera's interest and press key, and you'll notice that a keyframe does pop up here inside of Story, and a color-coded keyframe appears here inside of our transport controls. So now let me go ahead and just scrub forward a little bit in time, right about to the point where our character begins to go into his tumbling sequence, maybe right about here, and I'll take the interest and drag it back out in front of the ninja like so. Let's make the camera current for just a moment, just to make sure everything still looks okay. Let's also uh, make sure that the interest itself was keyframed. Indeed it was, so let's scrub back through this. You'll notice that our camera is kind of outrunning our character. So that's a bit of a problem. Rather than having to re-keyframe anything, with the beauty of story, we can just take this clip and slide it forward a little bit in time. So it now the rotation of the camera takes place a little bit later. So now the character leans forward, begins to run, and the camera follows along with him much more smoothly. So that's very nice uh, that you can do that. You can just completely take entire segments of animation and change their time just by a real quick click and drag. Let's go ahead now and get our second camera into the scene. So I'll just go ahead and drag in another camera like so. Let's go ahead and get it set up before I do too much else. Right now here's our initial camera. Let's jump back to frame zero so we have a better idea of where everything needs to start out. I want this camera to be on the opposite side of the ninja. If I want to, I can just make it current to help position it. So we'll just make camera current. I'll place it here right in front of the ninja as well. And just kind of as a, a quick trick that might help uh, a few of you out, let me jump back into my producer perspective. Let's say I want both of these cameras to be looking at the exact same spot. I can take the interest of one and alt-drag it onto the interest of another one and say align all. And now they're both looking at the exact wow, same spot. Wow, that's very cool. So yeah, just kind of a neat trick to, that might help you out. I don't know, just one of those things. All right, I want this camera to be down inside of Story as well, but it has to have its own camera animation track. Now, rather than right-click and go into Insert and selecting Camera Animation Track, I don't really have to do that. I can just alt-drag this camera down inside of Story and let go, and you'll notice Motion Builder automatically assigns the proper camera, and everything's all set up to begin animating. So, very cool. Let's go ahead now and deactivate animation for this track. Activate it for the lower camera animation track, like so. And what I'm going to do is right-click and select the interest, so I have both the camera and the interest selected. And I'll press key. 
And now all I really want to do is scrub forward in time to right about the point... Actually, here's what I want to do, just kind of as, as a test, so you guys uh, understand the method behind what I'm doing. I'm going to scrub way forward until our character is going through his kicks. Right about here. Now, just as a note for all of our viewers, we have narrowed it down to where there's only one bullet time kick. So I know we did two in the last lesson, but we kind of narrowed it down to simplify everything, so now only the third kick gets bullet time. I want the camera to stop following the ninja at about the point where it's looking at this area, and then we'll just have it rotate from there on out. So just kind of, I'll take a mental note of this particular spot, and then right as our ninja first crosses this spot, which is about here, we'll take our camera, drag it forward, like so. Now let's scrub back in time, and we can see the camera actually trailing forward. Now, if you look, it looks like the camera kind of gets ahead of the ninja there for a minute, and that's a bit of a problem. So let's actually let's make the camera current and have a look at that. If we right click, make camera current, and rewind, we'll notice we kind of outrun the ninja, but it's not a necessarily a bad thing. Remember that. It does kind of have a cool effect. It does, but remember, our first shot is going to be of the ninja actually walking with the other camera, so we don't really have to worry about that. So right now, everything's looking pretty good. He's fading right in. So from here on out, I just want to animate only the camera's interest following the ninja for the rest of his sequence. So we'll go ahead. We'll come up here to where he lands and does his roll forward right about here. And we'll move the interest back to where it's focused back on the ninja. Let's make the camera current to make sure it's, it does indeed see him. Now, if you check this out, look at this. The uh, a keyframe was not automatically placed, so we need to go back in and make sure that that camera's interest was keyed. Let's go in here, right click, select camera interest, and press key, just to make sure everything got keyed. So we see our interest, track the ninja all the way through. Let's make the camera current so we can see how that actually looks. Very cool. Yeah, that is very cool. So now he's going to come back up. Let's jump back to producer perspective. Let's take just the interest this time. And we'll slide it forward to about here. So it's still looking at the ninja. Now what I'm doing, I'm just going to watch the interest itself and make sure it just stays on with the ninja. So it's looking pretty good here. All right, so he goes through one kick. Let's go ahead and bring the interest up to actually about here. We'll let him kind of get a little ahead of the interest. So he runs and does a kick. Then he walks backwards, does a second kick. And all we'll do is we'll just move the interest a little bit for a little secondary motion so it doesn't look like the camera ever stays perfectly still. And then we have our flying roundhouse kick. And I have some special things. This is, this is the bullet time kick right here. So maybe right up till we get to this point, I'll just bump up the interest a little bit. And I've got something special in mind for this kick that we'll actually be demonstrating a little bit later. So actually, that's all of the animation I need for these cameras. Uh, the bullet time effect is going to have a pan around. Now, you guys remember how we mentioned turntable earlier on in the lessons. I'm, I told you there was another way to do a pan around. We're going to be demonstrating that here in the next uh, few lessons. It's, it's going to involve using constraint tracks, generic animation tracks, and whatnot. So got some exciting stuff come up. Let's go ahead and take a quick second and review what we've got, just so we can see how we've animated these cameras. I'll right-click on this first camera and make it current. Let's rewind all the way back to the beginning. And let me set my display to models only to hide a lot of this uh, extra clutter in the screen. We'll hit play. This first camera just follows the ninja as he goes into his run. And then it just stops, and he goes on with the rest of what he's doing. So if I jump back to producer perspective, let's set our display back to normal so I can see all of my cameras. Let's go ahead and hit Control e to get back to producer perspective. There we go. And now I'm in my other camera, so we'll go ahead and make it current. And then if we hit play... Actually, wrong camera. No big deal. Uh, get confused. Okay, so uh, Too let's many go. cameras. Exactly. So here's camera one. We'll just press play, and we track along with the ninja. We follow him through a sequence. He rolls forward. He goes through some kicks. We watch him do it.
And he goes into the bullet time kick, which we'll be doing some special stuff with a little bit later. Pretty cool looking. Absolutely. So that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this lesson. We've seen how to animate using story and camera animation tracks. So thanks a lot, everybody.